About three weeks ago, I ran a Minecraft r slash place experiment on my server og-network.net. Players had over 60 blocks, including light source blocks, a massive 200 by 200 canvas, and the 60 second cooldown between block places. The experiment ran for just under one week and was entirely documented on my 24-7 Twitch stream. Go follow that, by the way. And what this sparked was one of the most entertaining, stressful, and unique Minecraft experiences I've ever had. So, what happened? Well, day one was eventful, to say the least. We allowed 100 players on the server at the same time, and only 20 to 30 minutes in, we had already filled the entire server up, with another 100 to 150 waiting in the hub or on our SMP and survival games. Now, there was a lot which happened day one, which we'll get into, but overall throughout this video, I want you to keep an eye on a few builds. First of all, Pac-Man down the bottom left, arguably the first proper build in the experiment. But would it last the entire week, or would it succumb to the war zones each corner would devolve into? Number 2, Emilia from the anime ReZero, the clear and undisputed best girl of the series, who I suggested we build jokingly, but little did I know what defending such a build would entail. Also, we build it upside down for some reason. Number 3 is this Ukraine flag here, center of the map, which ended up being constantly contested throughout the entire week. Number 4, whatever the hell this thing is here, which popped up out of the blue on day 1. Number 5, this little pumpkin face thing, which would be the sleeper agent of the entire experiment. You'll likely forget about it, but if you don't, keep an eye out. Number 6, the Minecraft discontinued features community logo. And finally, the main flags such as the trans flag and German flag, which would move around the map many times throughout the week. And of course, keep an eye on each corner, because according to this heat map, one of our server admins, the C-dubs made, they would be some of the most active areas throughout the entire experiment. Also, keep an eye on my sub count, which is almost at 350k. So if you haven't already, please consider subscribing and help me reach it. It would mean a lot if you did. No pressure, of course. Day 1, surprisingly, compared to the other days to come, was mostly peaceful. There was still a lot of space on the canvas, so players didn't really have to contest one another. Yet. A notable change we made during Day 1 was reducing the block place cooldown from 60 to 45 seconds, which in hindsight, may have not been the best of decisions. Here's what the canvas looked like at the end of Day 1. Amelia is looking good, as is Pac-Man and the discontinued logo. The German flag is starting to take up a good portion of the map, but the current biggest build has to go to the orange corner here, with the blue corner not too far behind. There's a lot of flags and smaller pixel arts, notably including Kirby, Hollow Knight, Lego, some Pokemon, and so much more, including some very unique builds. But Day 2 would be where the action would really begin. As we entered day two, free space became almost non-existent, and if you wanted to build something, you likely had to destroy somebody else's work in the process. The Germans decided they wanted a bigger flag and began consuming everything in their path to get so. They made it across about 75% of the map until players got annoyed and worked together to push them back, or just build over the top of them. It seems time zones may have been the real enemy though, because just after the Germans pushed all the way back to the lime green group's area, they were devastatingly ruined. In the meantime, however, another war was being fought. You see, I wanted to get my dog, which is my YouTube profile picture, on the map. So after enlisting the help of many individuals, of which I'm very grateful towards, we managed to negotiate with the void which had begun in the bottom right corner and get them to move. And where do you think they moved? That's right, up top left, near the Amelia build we had spent so many hours on already. Bad idea. While the leaders of the Void were nice enough to negotiate with me and build around Amelia, not everybody got the memo, and thus started a long and vicious war. I, along with many others a part of the newly formed Amelia gang, spent hours fixing and ensuring the Void would not consume Amelia, as well as negotiating with griefers. You can even see that one of the most contested areas on the map was the border of where our Amelia art was, along with her face which was attacked almost 24-7. Fortunately, after a lot of protecting, the Void did not consume consume her, but spread around her, and actually grew to a scary size. I mean, this is quite literally one ninth of the map here. And while multiple wars were going on up top, a few players had decided to build a memorial to Geometry Dash player Michigan, which we'll refer to as the Mishi build. It was probably the biggest build on the map at the time, if you exclude voids. The Minecraft discontinued features group had seemingly evolved into the Lime Green group and had a nice assortment of builds around it, which all took up a respectable part of the map. And also, a larger Pac-Man was built, which looked very cool. Also, my profile picture got very sucked. Day 3, people discovered alt accounts. At first, we let it be, but then, well, I don't think this needs any explanation. 
We eventually limited player alts depending on the player count to make it fair. Nevertheless, day 3 was when things really kicked up a gear. You see, up until this point, the experiment hadn't been going that long, and most players hadn't really built anything crazy. But now that there were a considerable amount of builds which took a lot of hours to construct, and now that players were very invested in them, they didn't want to see them get destroyed. I had begun watching my two builds like a hawk. I had alts on 24-7 on my second monitor while working on a video, and I would constantly ward off any griefers or negotiate with them. I became really invested in the entire experiment, far more than I predicted when I was planning the entire thing. And while most griefers were cooperative, a few made life really difficult. I don't know why, but for some reason, Amelia became public enemy number one, and it seemed that every goddamn 20 minutes, a new gang of players would come along with their unique idea to grief her, as you can see from the heat map. Now, most of these griefers who weren't cooperative would give up griefing after about a minute or two when I would repair their damage instantly. But one player got smart about it and began a new griefing trend, which would spread throughout the entire experiment. This mother... I mean my good friend was never Brandon, seemed to be content on ruining my day. At first he tried to grief Amelia just by blacking out a few blocks, of which he soon realized would get him nowhere. So then he decided to pioneer a new method of griefing, the stealth grief. He would sneakily fly under the map to grief, making it harder for me to see what he was doing. Furthermore, the div shh, I mean nice guy, would instead of griefing with colors which would stand out immediately, use colors such as purple to make the griefs very hard to notice. And for a while, I didn't even realize that Amelia's arm had been entirely consumed, until I caught him flying under the map out of the corner of my eye. The d- I mean, smart guy, also wasn't open to negotiating until I told him I would put him in a video if he would royally get lost. To which he agreed, very quickly. I hope you're happy he wasn't ever Brandon, there you go. Nevertheless, after this, I began seeing many players utilize the bottom of the canvas to go around and stealth grief others, providing an entirely new dimension of strategies. In the meantime, the Void decided to not just be a pain in my ass, and also went and upset literally everybody else. They must have got bored with creating a giant square, and impressively spread like a virus right into the center of the map, pissing off a lot of people in the process. Just nearby, the Ukraine flag had become bigger and better. It was griefed a fair amount though, and took a lot of defending I heard. Down the bottom right, my profile picture got very sus again, and was covered by something truly garbage that almost made me fall asleep from boredom and bad game mechanics upon looking at it. Towards the center of the map, some people had begun building lots of milk buckets, which was interesting, and in the meantime, Brazil had just finished its fourth flag. The orange corner was basically gone at this point, and the blue corner seemingly didn't spread any further either. Somebody also built this cool star right next to Pac-Man. And unfortunately, a lot of smaller and cooler builds around this area of the map were damaged during day 3, as the fight for space grew more and more intense. Day 4 saw a unique build be completed, which would have been extremely difficult to protect. The two QR codes center right of the map. Now, honestly, I'm pretty sure they were intended to be a rickroll or some meme at one point, but because they are so easy to alter, the few times I scanned it by pausing the time lapse, I got this interesting GIF and an app called MyTrade, which is used to trade gold or something. Anyways, we'll come back to the QR codes on day seven and see what they have in store for us then. Back to the thorn in my side that is, <clears throat> I mean, was the void corner, as it looked like they finally got what was coming to them. When I woke up day four, it seemed an invasion of green had vomited itself all over the void. It really came out of nowhere, just look at this footage. Once again, I spent a couple hours watching over Amelia like a hawk, and ensuring this new green conglomerate wouldn't destroy her. And in the meantime, somebody had given her a nice crown, which I thought was cool. Down to the bottom right hand side of the map now, a new group had formed, becoming known as the Missing Texture Gang. If you didn't know, in many games including Minecraft, when certain textures are missing from the game's files, you get this lovely purple and black texture instead. This group basically covered up my profile picture until we told them to get stuffed, and then they continued spreading over this markiplier down here and continued to the center of the map. They would really become a force to be reckoned with over the next few days. Day 4 also saw the beginning of what would become another highly contested area on the map. The trans flag would begin spreading downwards and they made quite a lot of ground, getting about halfway down the canvas. They did go around pre-existing builds though, which was good. The mostly inactive orange corner had now been consumed by purple and then destroyed by some very mature players and rebuilt over. 
during day four, with the canvas completely covered now, a lot of players realized the now vomited on void was mostly available to build on and migrated up there or expanded their builds as did one of our group members building this nice nameplate and love heart. Also, whatever this thing was got a makeover which I thought looked quite funny, as well as some more personal attacks being visible it seemed. Also, notice how the entire canvas is bordered in this black and yellow construction tape looking outline? Yeah, some group decided to do that as well. Day 5 saw the beginning of one of the most ambitious groups yet, known as the Glowstone Gang. They started at the center of the map with the ambitious goal of spreading glowstone all throughout. These guys really gained some ground, as I think it started as a bunch of very committed friends, and I remember seeing them all online with the same entirely glowstone skin as well. It seemed they all had to go to bed however, because the glowstone gang were incredibly time zone dependent, and as soon as they left, all their hard work was erased. Wait, hang on, is that the infamous griefer pop? And just above it, Germany decided they wanted to try again and built quite frankly a gigantic flag below Mishi, which saw a couple hours of success before being consumed by builds around it again. But also on day five, tragedy had struck. You see, I got so invested in protecting my builds that I was genuinely losing sleep. I went to bed later so I could stay online longer, and I was so anxious about my builds being irreparably destroyed that I probably barely slept at all. So you can imagine my horror when I woke up day 5 to see this. Now there's some explaining to do. I mentioned earlier that with the Grin Conglomerate defeating the Void, a lot of space had become available up top left. And that was good. It was quite peaceful for a day, and most people just minded their own business up there. Well, a couple hours into day 5, someone was just messing around, and another person didn't like it, and I kid you not, this is the discussion they had. Hey, why are you ruining my build and placing purple in the corner? I don't know, purple's my favourite colour I guess. Oh okay, I'll help you then. And suddenly, out of nowhere, led by a player named Cozy HQ, about 15 to 20 people were now attempting to build a purple void at the top left of the map. At first, I was quite happy because A, it blended in with Amelia perfectly, and B, I negotiated with them and told them not to destroy Amelia. The corners are always going to have something dangerous going on, so this is probably a good outcome, I thought. And they spread faster than anything I had seen throughout the entire experiment. But it was short-lived, as it seemed that many people had gotten upset with purple and went to build over it. Unfortunately, Amelia was caught in the crossfire, or maybe intentionally attacked by some rem simps, we'll never truly know. Five days. Five days we had defended her relentlessly, and this is what we had to show for it now. It was truly tragic, but that wouldn't be the end. We'll come back to Amelia on day seven. The vo- I mean the hood- oh wait, I mean the hose- tried their luck a second time. At the bottom left corner this time, which for the first time in five days put Pac-Man under threat. Lots of player heads were on the map now, by the way. I think some were from a community called Pinacraft, and others from their own SMPs or servers, which was cool to see. There was also a logo of a dead game and Smash Bros. Some group also built this funny looking orange car with a moustache on day 5, which I thought was interesting. And up the top right, somebody had begun a black stained glass void as well. And of course, it wouldn't be r slash place if we didn't have a penis shaped among us. Day 6 was when people began realizing that if they wanted to leave their mark on history, they would need to keep defending, because the experiment was ending soon. The black stained glass void made some hefty progress early into day 6 before giving up and being covered with builds again. Did I mention somebody built this cool looking portal companion cube as well by the way? Amelia was in even more dire condition, being covered up by a bunch of other people, and even my profile picture took some damage. If I ever do this experiment again, I'm avoiding corners at all costs by the way. Get it? Uh, voiding? <laughs> no? Building there is just asking for trouble. The trans flag saw some interesting griefs, and Germany decided to log on again and show everybody who's boss. These guys were seriously dedicated, although too time zone dependent once again. Yeah, remember what I said about the corners? The missing texture group also gained a lot of territory later in day 6, but luckily they avoided Markiplier. Netherlands also came out of nowhere and created a massive build here. But most shockingly, after 6 days of almost being virtually untouched, Pac-Man finally saw some real griefers. Luckily it was fixed, but this was worrying as being arguably the first and longest lasting build at this point, it would be a damn shame if on the final day, it was destroyed. The trans flag saw quite a bit of griefing, but was actually very swiftly repaired. And that was it for the most part on day 6, it seemed most players weren't trying to grief others, but rather maintain their own builds. Day 7, the final day, oh boy, Emilia was in the worst condition so far. But you see, we didn't give up. No, while it looked like we had, in the background we had been plotting, analysing and devising a plan. 
I plan to all unite on the final day and perform what honestly could be considered a world record speedrun in repairs. On the final day, we had about 15 people who all logged on at once and went at it. Almost entirely repairing Amelia in under an hour. And keep in mind, it took about 7 hours to build originally, according to the two early project leads, Chromatic Prism and Stratus. And that's not even including the purple background and text. It was a beautiful sight to behold, indeed. Meanwhile, the missing texture group continued to make scary amounts of progress and Pac-Man was in dire condition. The French also logged on and decided they wanted half of the trans flag and I guess at that point the trans flag builders had just had enough and decided to just let them have it. I should also mention that we ran our r slash place experiment by coincidence at the same time as the actual reddit r place, but for longer. So it seemed that some of the guys from the osu r slash place organization decided they hadn't had enough yet and built an almost illegible welcome to osu up the top right hand corner. Also, out of nowhere, this Dark Magician from Yu-Gi-Oh! was built, and is actually one of my favourite builds overall. It looks so cool. Well done to whoever worked on that. And thus, the experiment came to an end, and this right here is the final product. The high quality render is on my Twitter by the way, if you want to zoom in and look around yourself. Link below. Unfortunately, not all of Pac-Man survived, but most is still there. See the little pumpkin here? You probably forgot about it, but it's actually the longest lasting build of all here. Let me do a quick hyperlapse of it just for you. So well done whoever built and protected it. Of course, after our rescue operation, Amelia was in the best quality she'd been in yet, although still upside down. Can't say the same about my profile picture down the bottom right, however. Markiplier lost his hair, and this thing is still here. And here's a hyperlapse of that, which I thought was quite interesting. Germany managed to still secure a decent amount of the canvas and was beginning to envelop France, so good thing the experiment ended. The Mishi is still there looking great, as well as the entire Minecraft discontinued features and its surrounding lime green group builds, which seem to be the most peaceful area of the map along with the Mishi build. By the way, remember, nice guy was never Brandon. Well, supposedly at one stage during day six or seven, he had about seven of his Minecraft skins built in various places of the map. Talk about narcissistic. There's a couple server logos up the top left, which look nice as well, and the OS Go logo. The QR codes both didn't work in the end, but going back a few hours and the bottom QR code links you to, surprise, surprise. The top one did not work, however. The missing texture group secured a decent amount of territory and the Ukraine flag still remained, making it another one of the oldest and longest lasting builds. And there's so much more small and cool stuff here, so if you want to check out the entire final project in game, you can join my server og-network.net and do so yourself. Also check out our SMP and survival games while you're there. But anyways, I hope you guys all enjoyed participating in the experiment. I know for a fact that I got far more involved than I originally planned, but had a lot of fun nonetheless. Massive shout out to all these players and everybody else who helped with the Amelia build, as well as my profile picture. Let me know your favorite build in the comments down below. Join the Discord and follow my Twitter. Thank you all so much for watching. Oh, and I don't remember Minecraft being a game which limited us to only 2D. Stay tuned.